All right, and welcome to uh, INST 237 Final Control Elements. This is Lab 7, where we're wiring an automation direct drive to a motor. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, wire it up according to this ladder diagram uh, here. This is the drive, the automation direct drive, uh, going into the motor. Uh, the other thing we will use uh, besides just adding power to the motor is uh, relay contact uh, R10 and R1. That'll be our run light. So our run confirm light will have a red light there. Uh, and so I've already wired it up as you can see uh, on this screen here. Uh, starting uh, with the power supply, uh, L1 comes in uh, to the top of the drive here. This is our L1 power single phase 120 volt power coming into the drive. Okay, uh, And then this is our uh, L2 uh, back to neutral coming in over here. Okay, so L1 and L2, the terminals, I can't see them on the video, uh, but are these two first terminals uh, up here. And then this will convert it into uh, variable speed drive uh, for 240 out, um, where we can modify the uh, frequency of that. <clears throat> now, if you've been in motor controls class already, you're pretty familiar with this setup. You've already wired one of these up. Uh, if you haven't been, then we will do it uh, next semester in motor controls. Uh, output of that drive then is T1, T2, and T3, which then go into the motor. And that can be shown here with these wires, uh, and then on these wires here going into the motor. So this will convert it to 240 volts, and so we are on the low voltage side of the motor. Okay, and so make sure when you wire them up that you wire it up according to low voltage uh, and not high voltage, not to 480. Okay, so everything's connected for that. Uh, so that takes care of everything uh, up here for the L1, L2, T1, T2, and T3. Uh, so the last thing that needs to be connected is coming in from, again, L1, uh, our incoming power, uh, going up through this purple wire with the loop on it, goes into R1, uh, and then R10 uh, comes out to a red pilot light, and then it goes down into uh, L2. Okay, so uh, also, not shown online uh, diagrams, ladder diagrams, as you can see, is they don't put um, grounding on there. Okay, grounding is implied uh, to be done. And so here, I don't have a green wire for it like I would like. Uh, so to use white instead, but ground comes in uh, to the drive and from the drive into the motor. So everything is uh, grounded as well. Okay, and so uh, we're not using any of these input devices yet. We will in the next lab, uh, so we're bypassing those. Also, just to make sure there's no confusion, we're not using this motor starter either. This is Allen Bradley. Uh, this is not variable speed drive. Uh, this is just electro electromechanical uh, contactor, which is even more in motor controls uh, than in this class. All right, so we have our trainer plugged in. Uh, I just need to turn the power on to the trainer. Once we turn the power on, you can hear that. Uh, and see, notice the uh, power came onto that, uh, the display. Okay, and then uh, we will uh, start the motor using the keypad on the drive. When the drive comes on, this red light should come on, and it should be off when the motor is stopped. Okay, so just to start it, I just push this button right here, this run stop button. Go ahead and make this bigger run stop button here. Okay, as you can hear, kind of see the motor is turning now. It's probably hard to see the motor exactly turning, but you can definitely hear it. Notice also our light came on. Okay, not the brightest light, but it did come on. Then we can adjust the speed using this potentiometer. Slow it down and speed it up. This is showing us our frequency, 50 to get all the way up to 60 hertz. When we're ready to stop the motor, we simply press the stop. And if you watch this pilot light, you know it's not the brightest, you'll see it go out once the motor actually does come to a complete stop. Okay. 
Okay, as you uh, notice, uh, we went ahead and did all of this up here by running it, uh, running the motor, so all of this has been checked off, the motor does run, and the potentiometer changes the speed. Now what we want to do is we want to change a few of the parameters. Uh, in the previous lab that you did, uh, you got the lab book out, you got the instruction manual out, and you figured out what parameters to change, uh, and so we're going to actually navigate the menu uh, this time. Now we want to have the drive accelerate over the course of one minute when starting. Okay, so I have uh, those pulled up here. This is just the uh, user manual. We just jump right down to drive parameters, and we jump right into ramp parameters. Okay, that's what we're talking about, ramp, when we want to accelerate or decelerate over a particular amount of time. Okay, and so what we are going to do is we're going to look for the acceleration time, range from anywhere from 0.1 to 600 seconds. Okay, the default setting is 10 seconds. Okay, and so what we will do is we will change that. So we're looking for uh, P101, that's what we're looking for there, it's P101, parameter 1.01. Uh, okay, and so if we go back uh, and actually look at this, we are going to uh, hit the program button. If you can see that, let me make this bigger. Program button, notice a zero up here. We're going to arrow up till we see a one. Program enter, that's 0, 0.0. Program up. 1.01 .01. enter we want it to be over the course of a minute so we it would be 60 seconds this gives us our number in seconds and there we go we want to save it we just hit enter and it brings up the next parameter, which is 1.02. Okay, which is uh, decelerate, which is what we want over one minute. Okay, get what it is. It's going to be on the 1.02 deceleration time. And so we hit enter and we arrow up until uh, 60 seconds for this as well. Okay, and then uh, what will be an application to have the motor start and stop slowly? That's something that you can figure out uh, on your own whenever you figure out, whenever you do the complete the lab. And then we want to, last thing we want to do is we want to change the motor nameplates to amps to match the one that's on the motor uh, nameplate. Okay, and so we want to change the settings of the drive to match this. Okay, this has a uh, nameplate for uh, current uh, on the low voltage side is 1.7, okay, 1.7 amps. Otherwise, that's too much current going through the motor and the motor uh, could do damage to the motor. And so we want to make this uh, parameter, uh, the parameter on this drive. Okay, so the motor rated amps is P0.1. Uh, so we have this. And we want to change it to what our what our motor says itself, which is 1.7 amps. So I'm going to go up here and change parameter P 0 0.01. 0 0.01 gives me a value, a default value of 2.5. Now I'm going to change that down to 1.7 to make sure it matches what's on the uh, motor, what's on the motor itself. Okay. And we should be able to go ahead and start and run the motor. It should work. Now, if you notice, it's going to take us a minute to fully speed up. Okay. So it should take us a minute from the time we push that start button until we get all the way up to the full 60 hertz this time. Okay. The last thing that we need to do, as you notice, it's taking, still taking some time. It's still speeding up. Even though I'm not changing anything with the potentiometer, it's still changing the speed on its own. 
but it has a one minute that it's going to get up to full speed. The last thing we want to do is we want to check the current as we go through. We just hit the display on this, that's showing us RPM. Then that's showing us voltage. And that's showing us current right there. It has an A. And then a 1.2. That's showing us 1.2 amps going to the motor here. So the full frequency is 60 hertz, full voltage, full RPMs 3450, and if we slow it all the way down, it'll take us a minute to decelerate. Now if I push the stop button, It'll come to a complete stop, but it'll come to a complete stop over uh, a minute. Okay, so you'll be able to uh, put in the answers for these five questions uh, and then submit them via Blackboard. As we see over the next 30 seconds, this should go down. Uh, and once it comes to a complete stop, this uh, red light here should go off, indicating that the motor is not running. As long as the motor is running, this light should be on. And we'll change that function uh, in a different lab. Okay, everything shut off and we're good. So go ahead and fill the answers out uh, and then submit them via Blackboard. Let me know if you have any questions.